Hi, I'm Michael Azevedo from the Newburyport Documentary Film Festival, and we're here chatting today with a director of one of the films that's going to be featured at this year's festival, which starts on September the 15th. And joining us today is Matthew Hashiguchi, who is the director of a documentary called The Only Doctor. Welcome, Matthew. Hi, thank you. It's good to be speaking with you today. Uh, so before we uh, dive into a few questions for you, uh, let's share with our viewers the trailer for your film. This is the trailer for The Only Doctor. Let me explain a little bit about Clay County. We're one of the poorest counties in Georgia. We also have one of the poorest health statuses. I'm the only provider in the county. I've been the only uh, medical provider here for the last 13 years now. And you got to quit smoking. Yay. I, I am working on that for okay. sure. I know Good. I need to. They get the pan fix? There, there's some like leaks that they can put on it. And they said, if this does not work, she's going to have to get a new unit. So, hey, how are you doing? Things have always been very tight financially here, and I, I basically don't take a salary. So I've, I've volunteered. And that's that's no longer feasible. <laughs> so there, there has to be another plan to allow me to continue to, to volunteer here. I'll retire at some point, and unless there's some kind of structure, some somebody has responsibility for health care here, there won't be any health care here. This town here needs everything, but uh, you need to be closed completely down. It's just keeping it real. Because if it never happens like that, we will stay here and struggle forever. Mercer has started negotiations to uh, use us as a model site for rural health care, but I don't completely trust them, so I want everything in writing before we move much forward. We, we went to uh, telehealth today. It just was becoming untenable to be there with sick people. When I, when I use the cell phone, uh -huh. I have to go out into the yard and it's either <laughs> hit or miss. This whole idea of the video is just, we're not ready for that out here yet. Well, we're, we're still talking with Mercer. They seem to have changed their plans uh, for this clinic, but I can't abandon my individual patients and in knowing that they're not gonna get the care that they need. I, I really don't know what the future holds. I mean, none of us do. Got it yet? Yeah, you did. Matthew, tell us how you found out about the story of Dr. Karen uh, Kinsell and what was it about her story that was so compelling for you? So this this whole um, film started out when I was, uh, my wife and I were preparing for a family and about 2018, which is when I started thinking about like the next documentary project, Georgia was the worst state in the United States to give birth in. Um, the maternal mortality rate was oh, far beyond the national numbers. So for us kind of preparing for this, this major uh, event to learn of the issues, the healthcare issues in Georgia was really frightening and concerning. So the film started out being about um, maternal mortality and giving birth. And I think as I was kind of speaking with people and meeting with mothers and families, it, I realized I was not the best person for that particular story. But I had read an interview with Dr. Kinsel where she was talking about maternal mortality rates in rural regions. And what she had talked about was not just the issues with giving birth in rural areas, but just the access to everything in a rural area. Um, not just healthcare, but grocery stores or pharmacies or schools and all these things that can better your life. And uh, I had reached out to her and was asking her questions about her practice. And she said, you know, come on down, come, come um, visit me in Clay County. And 
it's about five hours away from where I live. I live in Savannah and she's on way on the other side of, of Georgia, um, literally right across from the Alabama line. So I would, I would go and visit every few weeks or every month and, um, film with her. And, and I did that for about two and a half years. I would, I would repeatedly go back and film with her. Uh, but her story was much more about access in general, not just maternal health, but mm -hmm. access to everything in that, in that region was a struggle. When you spoke about her story uh, with your uh, fellow Georgians, what was their response to the fact that she is or was the only doctor in this county uh, treating a, uh, an area with a population of about 30,000 where 40% of the folks uh, live below the poverty line? Yeah, there, there's about 3,000 people there in the county. In the town that she's in, there's maybe about 900 people Okay. So anytime I really spoke with anyone or, or shared the film with anyone, they were uh, disgusted, uh, outraged that this is happening um, in the United States, especially uh, a place that is, you know, kind of we, we prop it up as this wonderful country and everyone has opportunities to achieve success and obtain this American dream. And this is just clearly not the, the reality. Um, for people, not just in rural areas, but people who are uh, don't have access to the same opportunities or systems that other people have. So I think really it was the most reactions that I was receiving was just, I can't believe that there's only one doctor in this county and that it's as poor and, and underserved at it, as it is, yet there's really nothing being done to help them. So... I think for me, I, I kind of grew to sensitize to the issues there. And it was very, um, uh, it brought me back when I would share it with people because then they would be completely mortified. And I would remind myself, oh, yeah, like this is, you know, this is not something that I should be used to. Uh, I should be just as mortified now as I was the first time I, I came and, and went to visit this, this county. And as a documentary filmmaker, uh, I believe this is your eighth documentary. Um, what is your objective as a documentary filmmaker when you set out to present a story like this to the world? Well, I, I think with this film, the objective was to, um, one, maintain truth and to try and be as, as honest to the story in the region as possible. Um, Ethics are also very important to me. And I wanted to make sure that those that were being filmed or sharing their story wanted to share their story. There were a number of instances where we stopped filming because it just didn't seem it was the ethical or right thing to do. Uh, so I really wanted to make sure that people that shared their story wanted to wanted their story to be shared. Mm -hmm. um, with the story as a whole, it I, I wanted to show that achieving healthcare and achieving a happy, successful life just is not, it's just not obtainable for many people. And um, I think that really comes from my experiences of being a Japanese American whose family was incarcerated during World War II, that the rights that were afforded my family were not the same rights that other people were um, able to, to access. So I think with most of my films, it's, it's, I'm always curious about this idea of the American dream and whether or not we all have access to this, this concept. And uh, I think my film illustrates that, no, that not everyone has access to this, um, this experience. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing was balancing healthcare and stories of people. At, at, at first, we were trying to balance how much of healthcare policy and information do we include in this and over time what kind of came to the forefront was just the stories of perseverance and determination and um hope that something good will happen to uh, to them and i don't want to give away any spoilers uh in in, in regard to your documentary but uh, uh mercer uh does come in and begin to play a role what can you give us a hint of at least um around how that changed the dynamic of of what might be possible in that county yeah mercer that development was really unexpected and it just added another 
a layer of complexity to healthcare because Dr. Kinsel's belief of what healthcare should be is very different from what Mercer's is. And Mercer's doing wonderful things. They're placing clinics in rural regions where there, there aren't clinics. So they're, they're providing an opportunity for people to access healthcare. I think the, the difference lies in, well, who should be able to obtain that healthcare and what is the overall end goal um, with a clinic or with healthcare. And Dr. Kensel really believes that healthcare should be available for everyone and anyone, even if you don't have insurance, even if you don't have income and can't pay for it, she wants to provide, provide healthcare for everyone. In our world, that's not the way it, it works. If you can't afford something, you can't get it. And Mercer is, um, they want to run a, a practice that that can sustain itself mm -hmm. and that can pay the bills. And that just is not really possible in a place where there there's high levels of poverty. People are extremely sick, um, lots of disability where people just don't have money or health insurance to pay for care. So that that created a sort of a conflict between um, Dr. Kinsel and and uh, Mercer University. And it really shows what are the differing motives of um, health care in the United States. Well, the film is The Only Doctor, and we've been speaking with the film's director, Matthew Hashiguchi, and he will be, uh, his, the film will be playing on September the 16th as part of this year's Newburyport Documentary Film Festival. Matthew, thanks for joining us to talk about this film and uh, encourage all viewers to come on out and see it. It will be time well spent. And we want to take a minute right now just to thank some of the sponsors of the Newburyport Documentary Film Festival.